The tradition of farming and ranching runs deep in this nation and nowhere more than in Montana. This is Big Sky Country, where agriculture is still the state's number one industry. But carrying on this tradition to the next generation of farmers and ranchers is without a doubt in jeopardy. The price of land has skyrocketed and the prospect of young people getting involved in production agriculture plays out like a lottery winner's dream. In one year alone, land values increased over 20%. And with the average age of a farmer being 57 years old and rising, America's productive farm and ranch lands will soon be on the sale block and will quickly disappear. For retiring producers, development opportunities that will allow them to cash in on their land are just a phone call away, and subdivisions are rapidly replacing the family farm. This dangerous trend has many concerned, especially Montana's young farmers and ranchers who are committed to continuing the way of life that feeds, fuels, and clothes this nation. Bruce Wright represents the fourth generation of his family to farm the land in the Spring Hill area north of Bozeman. Bruce has a passion and love for agriculture that runs deep, but Bruce and his wife Gwen do not have children to pass this land directly down to, and urban sprawl is knocking at their door. For the future, they need viable options that would keep this land in production agriculture. It's tremendously hard to get into farming. Basically, to be a farmer now, your dad had to, your, your family had to have been farmers. And you get into it because they have already developed the land base and the asset base, the machinery, all the equipment, everything that needs to be done. Uh, to try and go out and buy it is, is prohibitive. Long term, the estate tax has been a, a real tough one for agriculture because most farmers don't have a lot of cash. Their assets are tied up in their ground. And if you have to pay the government half of what your estate is to satisfy their requirements, that's taken away half of your assets have to be liquidated to satisfy that. The estate tax and the capital gains tax are set up to take land out of farming. It's, there's just no way around that. Um, there's certainly a lot of work that could be done for setting up incentives uh, with the capital gain structure to to encourage that. Jim Willis is the Montana Farm Bureau's Young Farmer and Rancher Committee Chair. As a young producer, Jim and his family have a dream of owning their own operation someday. From Judith Gap, Montana, he talks about the importance of continuing to bring young families into production agriculture. I was raised in a dairy family. We had a, a small dairy in Colorado, and I knew from an early age that I wanted to be in production agriculture. Unfortunately, our, uh, the family dairy wasn't making it, and it, uh, it was sold when I was in college. But I had already started with an ag degree in farm and ranch management, and I knew I wanted to get back into production agriculture. One of the great things about the agricultural lifestyle and the, the rural living is how much time you get to spend with your family and still be able to make a living. Uh, I have three children of my own now and they, they get to come with me a lot and they get to see the, the things I enjoy and the, the things I do to earn a living, which I really enjoy. Ideally, we would like to find someone that is willing to retire and give us a helping hand in getting started because it is so tough with land values where they are. It, that, that's one of the biggest restrictions for um, young people getting into it is the, the high cost of the land. But it is tough. The, a lot of ranchers, their land is their retirement plan. And so when they want are ready to retire, they want to just sell it and take that money. And, and of course, everybody wants the biggest retirement plan they can have, so they sell it to the highest bidder. And currently in Montana especially, a lot of the land value is, based, uh, is, is um, detached from the productive value. Passing the ranch down from generation to generation is still a very overwhelming obstacle for Tom and Mary Lane of Livingston. They have spent their life working hard to acquire enough land to support themselves and their four sons in the ranching business. 
Two of their six children and their families join in sharing the desire to continue the tradition of this family operation. Uh, this weekend, our whole family got together and uh, anyway, Dad was telling stories about putting these ranches together and all the trials and tribulations that go along with that endeavor. And looking around there, you know, it made me realize that uh, this property isn't ours to sell. It's something that he put together for us. And so you can imagine how I feel knowing that the government is going to come in here and probably force us to sell some of it. You know, that the land values have obviously outpaced the income generating potential of this property. So there's no way that we can generate enough income off this to ever buy it outright. It, it just won't happen. There's just no way. We couldn't pay the interest on the land payment or on the, on the land loan. That's just the reality of the situation. And, you know, is it an artificial value that's out there? I don't know. Somebody obviously is paying it, but they're paying it with money that wasn't generated off a farm or a ranch. We were able to take some gambles. And, you know, we've traded land and one thing or another and worked like hell and paid a lot of tax. That's what bothers me now about all this, this estate tax, inheritance tax. Over that period of time, from the time we started in 19, well, you can say we started in 1951. From that time until now, you know, we have paid a lot of income tax and a lot of land taxes and a lot of, of taxes that goes with the business. And, and uh, the only reason we've been successful is because uh, we worked hard. And uh, I get kind of emotional about these things because I've seen it when it was so damn good. And now I can see the thing changing now. And the opportunities aren't out there for these young people now. When I was brought up, if you had a little ambition and somebody to kind of finance you, you could get ahead, see. But damn it, you can't do that anymore. And you gotta be damn careful that you can hang on to what you got. And to be penalized for all the work we've done and all the taxes we paid, come back now and have the federal government say, you own us a big portion of your outfit and you're going to have to redeem it again. And to me, that's going to be awful, awful tough. Surviving in the ranching industry for six generations in the Paradise Valley of Montana is no small feat, but the Nelson family has done just that. This family has had to diversify to make it work, and with land around them selling for the unfathomable amount of twenty to $50,000 per acre, they are in for a fight to continue passing the land that they love down to the next generation. I mean, I couldn't imagine any other lifestyle. I, mean, I really look forward, I mean, we don't have any kids now, but I really do look forward to raising our kids out here so they can have the same opportunities we have. It's just, it's a lifestyle that's disappearing so quickly, and I think it's really one of the cornerstones of our of our society and our nation. Um, and it's just something I want to continue and try to instill that same love for the land and that same um, respect for the land and love for this lifestyle into my children. And I hope that we've got at least one of them that's interested in carry on this lifestyle. Because I think that's the only way it's going to survive is to instill this kind of work ethic in uh, kids. Whether we get people will call us all the time and say, oh, You've got a butte on your property. Um, it doesn't look like you are using it for hay crop. Why don't you just sell that to me so I can build a house on it? Yeah, that happens a lot. And yeah. like we always talk, we said, you know, if we're going to sell off one little chunk, we might as well just sell it all because that defeats our whole purpose and our whole principle of being here. I mean, we hate to see the land subdivided like this. It just it breaks our heart, and we're going to hold on to it as long as we can. But the state tax issue is huge. I mean, it, you start talking. If we, if my parents wouldn't have had foresight or been willing to work on it, we it would have been a little over a million dollars, our uh, tax that we owed. So it would have been sold. There's no question about it. If we wouldn't have done what we did, it would have been sold. 
the land value is increasing so much around here too. So back when, you know, it, it could be by the time you want to pass it on again, the, man, the land value could have doubled. Because around here, um, you know, they, they don't base it off of a, uh, operational function of, you know, agriculture land. It's more based on um, appraising values of subdivisions that they can put on it and make profit off of. We, I mean, our roots run very deep in this valley. We've been here for six generations, and we don't want to leave. We're going to fight it tooth and nail to, so we don't have to leave. But, I mean, there's just some things that you can't overcome, and a state tax might be one of them. Today, only 8% of America's farmers and ranchers are under the age of 35, and that number is decreasing each year. Legislative changes are needed to ensure that America's next generation of agricultural producers are able to continue this tradition that is the backbone of our country and provides the world with a safe, abundant, and affordable food supply. Well, we're only 2% of the population, and um, we're 2% of the population that's fastly disappearing, and we're really asking for your help. Um, we don't have a lot of money, but we do have a hard work ethic and we are dedicated to putting food on your tables. Um, we're just asking for a way of a, for a lifestyle to continue. Um, the state tax is probably the greatest threat to uh, our young farmers and ranchers. Uh, without your help, I don't think we're gonna be able to continue to uh, do what we love to do. Also, I think the land also needs your help. We need to preserve this open space. The easiest way, I think, to preserve that open space is to keep young farmers and ranchers on the land um, continuing to do what they do. It's not only good for us, it's not only good for your food, but it's also good for the wildlife that also share this land with us. So I'm just really begging you to uh, help us out here. The hardworking family farmers and ranchers that feed you need your help. To learn more about this issue, contact the Montana Farm Bureau Federation by going to www.mfbf.org.